Welcome back. You're still live with Expresso as we now take a turn towards health matters. Now, many of you might know that hearing loss is a common condition among the aging. But did you know that noise-induced hearing loss, or NIHL, is the second most common occupational disease in South Africa? I certainly didn't know that, and it's quite a shock. Now, today is, in fact, World Hearing Day. And to tell us a bit more about this condition is Lisa Shan from Cape Hearing Aids. She's She's an audiologist and she works for an audiology uh, firm and hearing device dispensing practice, if you will. She's brought some cool equipment <laughs> um, and uh, she's terrified me already. We haven't even <laughs> met yet. Um, the second leading um, cause of hearing loss mm. in that occupational space, that's a little bit terrifying. But I'm going to ask you to start at the beginning. What drew you into audiology and what it actually is an audiologist? What do you do? So, an audiologist looks at basically your yijing, everything that has to do with yijing. So, we look at the yijing tests, um, you know, what treatment options are available in terms of yijing aids and trying to improve your yijing as well. We also deal with, um, you know, symptoms of yijing loss like tinnitus you know, assessments as well as balance and dizziness issues as well. Um, why I went into audiology is, you know, I have a few family members that have actually, you know, was born with the yijing loss. Oh. Um, and, you know, as a young child, you know, learning how to communicate with them and, you know, being exposed to this, you know, yearly loss as a whole, um, it just drew me to, to audiology. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I enjoy what I do and I'm very, very passionate about it. I, I would imagine it's one of those that falls under the, the definition of calling. Mm. <laughs> it, it feels that yeah, way. It felt right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you get to help people on Definitely. such a base level, which is amazing. Definitely. Let's get into the negative side of of this space, what contributes to people's hearing loss? What are some of the main factors that come across mm. your table? So there are many, many things that cause hearing loss and I think it's important that we look at how the ear actually works and how we actually process sound in order to figure out what causes hearing loss. So the, the ear is divided in three different parts, the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. And so the outer ear is the part that we can see as well as the ear canal. And so sometimes, you know, people are born with, you know, malformations of your, your outer ear and this is the part that picks up the sound so it means that the sound can't pass through as well as what it would usually and then sometimes you know with the ear canal for example you have some wax blockage in the ear canal anything that's blocking that entry into the ear be it a foreign body be it you know wax block inflammation of the ear canal and then we move over to the middle ear which is the eardrum in that air filled space with those little tiny bones in the middle ear um, and there we look at ear infections or tumors or growths in the middle ear that can also once again block that conduction of sound into the inner ear. We then get the inner ear and this is where, you know, ototoxic medications such as TB treatment medications, wow. chemotherapies, um, also heredity. So if you have family history of hearing loss in, you know, in the family itself. Um, as well as one of the biggest factors, like you mentioned, being exposed to noise over a long period of time damages that innermost part of the ear. So it's quite complicated. Because it is quite yeah. a complicated and delicate Definitely. system in itself. So I can imagine something can throw that out. Definitely. Is hearing loss specific to a particular age group? Mm -hmm. When do we generally see the... the kind of more intense effects of hearing mm. loss kicking in. Mm. So hearing loss is definitely not governed by an age group, okay? So it, it, once again, it depends on the cause of your hearing loss. If you're kind of born with a hearing loss, it's congenital. If over time you're developing hearing loss because of your exposure to noise, some people, um, you know, develop a sudden hearing loss due to viral infections. So it can happen at any time across your life. I think there's a stigma attached to kind of hearing loss associated aged, yeah. with older populations. It's definitely not the case. In our practice, for example, we see quite a bit of younger people coming into the practice struggling with their hearing. Um, I'd love to test this little baby out because mm. we can't have really cool equipment without doing that. But no, I, I want to ask, is it curable or what of these conditions is curable? So once again, it's dependent on the cause of the loss. So if it's in the outer ear and it's wax, we can remove the wax. Or if it's ear infections, we treat, we treat it with medication. However, if it lies in the inner ear, then it's more of a permanent nature. The inner ear is not as accessible as the outer ear, um, as well as if there's nerve damage or things like that, we don't regenerate new hair cells or the nerve doesn't just grow back. So it usually is of a permanent nature, which we then look at using aids to and improve then look at the working aids. around that. Okay, exactly. I, I'm 
desperate to test this little guy out. So what do you, how do you go about assessing a person's hearing? Yes. So what we do is I would first obviously go through your full extensive case history with you just to get an idea of exactly what you're struggling with, you know, what chronic medications are you on, what is your level of exposure to Family noise. Family history. Family right, history, yeah. all of that. And then what I'll do is I'll have a look in the ears. I just want to see if there's any kind of wax build up, you know, is there anything blocking the ears, the eardrum nice and healthy, is there any fluid? And then what we do is we go and do a hearing test. So it's always good for anyone to just get their hearing tested overall, be it a screening test even. Yeah, I mean, then you can prevent further damage exactly, early on. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So what we do is I put the headphones on for you. Okay. You listen for, can I put I'll them on that, for you? Yeah. <laughs> so do you, do you ever, do you struggle with your ears at all? No, I think no. My, my studio director would say that, I think, <laughs> that I've got the, worst, got the worst hearing on the, on the team. But um, yeah, no, I, I feel like my hearing's okay. Okay, so usually what I would ask is if you have a better ear, do you use your right ear, your left a little bit better? And if it's not noticeable, then that's fine. I wouldn't sound I very usually, noticeable. Yeah, yeah I usually start with your better ear. So what I'll do is I'll put the headphones on. You're going to listen for a beep sound. Okay. And every single time that beep sound, that you hear that beep sound, you're just going to raise your hand or usually just press a button for me. Okay, okay. Cool. And so I'm looking at the softest level that you can hear. Wow, okay. okay. So I'm just going to place it on the ears cool. for Let's you. Cool, let's start with the right. Obviously, I've got my... my there we yeah, go. So I'm going to have side, to put yeah. them on both sides. No worries. Joy, it's just a little bit bigger. <laughs> Comes with the, with the job. <laughs> Might just say mess you get up your hair a little bit. Yeah, happens. <laughs> okay, and okay. Then what I do is we're then going to present different frequencies. Can you hear me? I can hear you, <laughs> yes. I'm going to present... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to present different frequencies. We test about eight different frequencies in each ear, which is mainly associated with speech and communication. Okay. So I start from the low sounds to the high sounds. As I present the sound, you then listen and you raise your hand. All right. Okay. Okay, so that's just an example of what would happen okay. if, that, if that is the case. Sure. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, it's not plugged in, so you won't be able to hear. <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm waiting. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm just... It's, it's finally... I can't hear anything. I love that. Um, uh, uh, brilliant, man. I absolutely love that. I love the fact that you are not just addressing problems that have happened, but that you can preempt mm. further issues. Uh, one last question. Earbuds, yes or no? Definitely no. Definitely what you're doing no. is you're just pushing it deeper into the ear. <laughs> there we have it. From the expert. What an absolute pleasure having you here this morning. Thank you so much. I'm Thank glad you. that you've got a day dedicated to the amazing work that Definitely. you do as well. Oh, um, and we look forward to having you back when you've completed your doctorate so we can get Thank into you. your <laughs> <laughs> um, some pretty shocking statistics are listed there as well and definitely worth thinking about in your own space. Hearing damage is a real thing and, in fact, is so prevalent within the workspace here in South Africa. It's something we all need to take cognizance of.